Okay. <clears throat> Oops, I forgot to put my phone on silent. Hmm. It's still loading. I wonder if I should do it on my phone. Let me see. Oh, we're live, Frank, we're live. <laughs> Amanda just texted me. Okay, Real Kindness Group, I uh, am not the technical. I don't have a 12 year old here, exactly. like Frank says, <laughs> to, uh, to manage our techni technical for us. But uh, numbers are in and we have the winners for this week's Real Kindness Contest, but What's really exciting is who we have here today to uh, kick this off and announce the winners is uh, Frank Shankwitz, uh, Frank Wishman Shankwitz, who is the creator and the founder of Make-A-Wish Foundation. Uh, he's the Ellis Island Medal of Honor winner. He is one of Forbes' top 10 keynote speakers. He's on the list of top 10 keynote speakers, uh, but actually he's number one. Uh, he's the, the number one on that list. Uh, and, He's also one of the most humble, down to earth, salt of the earth, and you know, just Frank, you're like John Wayne. You're like uh, today's <laughs> modern day John Wayne, and you know, he. Uh, we're lucky to have him here. So, Frank, um, tell us a little bit about uh, Make a Wish and, and give us an idea of how that got started and your movie. Oh wow! Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you for the invite, Katrina. I always appreciate that. Um, a little bit about Make-A-Wish, uh, and I'm going to do a very brief <laughs> synopsis of that. Uh, and it started in 1980. I was the uh, creator and co-founder of the foundation. But how it came about was uh, I was a motorcycle officer with Arizona Highway Patrol during this period. And we were informed about a little seven-year-old boy named Chris, uh, who unfortunately had terminal leukemia. And Chris's heroes were Ponch and John from the television show Chips that was very popular in those days. And for those people that don't know that show, and obviously that's 40 years ago, <laughs> it was the adventures of two California Highway Patrol motorcycle officers, Ponch and John. And Chris told his mother that when I grow up, I wish I could be a motorcycle officer just like Ponch and John. And a friend of the family, Tom Austin, who was a customs agent that worked with the Highway Patrol Department of Public Safety, called our commanders and said, is there any way that he could meet a motorcycle officer and just hang out for the day? Now this little boy is on IVs, he's in a hospital. But with the permission of his mother, his doctor and our commanders, our state police helicopter picked him up, flew him to our headquarters building in Phoenix and asked me to be standing by with a motorcycle. And that's the first time I met this little boy. And instead of our paramedics helping him out, which I thought they were gonna do, the door opens on a helicopter, a little red pair of sneakers, runs over a motorcycle. Hi, I'm Chris. Can I get on? Well, of course you can. This little boy is just laughing and having so much fun. And his mother is crying. And I didn't understand that at first. Then it dawned on me, she has her seven-year-old back. He's not in a hospital bed full of IVs. He's running around, jumping around like a typical seven-year-old. But Chris went on that day to become the first and only honorary Highway Patrol motorcycle officer then in the history of the Highway Patrol complete with a custom uniform we had made for him, his own badge, which is still assigned to him today. More important to him, the motorcycle wings that a motorcycle officer wears. And unfortunately, a couple of days later, he passed away. And I always like to think maybe those wings helped carry him to heaven. But we were informed that Chris is gonna be buried in a little town called Kewanee, Illinois. And our commanders came to me and said, we have lost the fellow officer because he was sworn in as a highway patrolman. And we want you and your partner to go back and give him a full police funeral, which we did. 
Now, this is before the days of internet, cell phones, anything, but the press picked this up. And we were met in Chicago airport by the local affiliates, ABC, NBC, CBS, et cetera, and following us on our story. And they even went ahead and had affiliates in this little town of Kiwani to cover the funeral of Chris. And he was buried in uniform. His grave marker reads, Chris Gracious, Arizona Trooper. But because of the press, we were also joined on that day by Illinois State Police, City Police, County Police, all wanting to help this fallen officer. But flying home, I just started thinking, here's a boy who had a wish. Why can't we do that for other children? And that's when the idea of Make-A-Wish Foundation was born. Let's let a child, then it was for terminal illnesses. Now it's for children with life-threatening illnesses. Let them make a wish and we'll make it happen. And because of this one little boy now, and in fact, uh, the 29th, April 29th was world, what we call World Wish Day. It was the day we granted his wish, the inspiration to start the foundation. Since that day, we have granted over a half a million wishes worldwide, just because of one little boy. Uh, every uh, <laughs> that is amazing and uh you know that one that one thing uh, that one experience has changed the lives and your decision at that time has changed the lives of so many uh frank anytime i go anywhere with you that we get stopped and anytime i mention you people tell me stories of how you have and make a wish has uh impacted them and the, the emotional responses because you literally have uh through the your your Make-A-Wish Foundation and what you started, you've literally made people's lives better. And the thing that sticks with me and that actually was part of the inception of this group, I don't know if I've told you that or not, There, uh, you were a huge influence in the message that you gave in our conversation where you talked about everyone can be a hero. And that's really what this is about. So the things you do go on and on and on. Yeah, it, it, it's a ripple effect, Katrina, and you're helping that ripple effect by what we're doing right now, which is kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, oh, and you, really quickly, can you tell a little bit about your movie? I'd love for people to know about it and watch oh, it. Let me, here, let me get a little promo here. Wishman, Wishman. <laughs> it's currently streaming on Netflix right now. It's available on Amazon or through my website, wishman1.com. But uh, this is a period piece, 1950 to 1980, uh, about the people that influenced my life as a young child up until my days in the Highway Patrol and how I met this little boy and which inspired me to start the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Now, what's fun about this movie, Wish Man, is we had a limited theatrical release last year, but of all things, we became qualified for an Academy Award nomination for Best Picture. We were with the big boys. Obviously, we weren't going to win, but just to be considered with the big boys. And because of this, I'm getting about 30 to 40 messages every day of what an impact made on this. I just got one from Switzerland yesterday, of all things. So it's fun. It's on Netflix. And watch that movie. You, first of all, there will not be a dry eye in your house when you do, and it will help you set your perspective and remember the things that are important. So, um, Frank, do you want to talk about the business of the week? Business of the week. I, 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 you know, I'm in Northern Arizona. I think I should be in the Seattle area because I'd love to win this package. <laughs> but the business <laughs> of the week, Percata Bueno restaurant is in partnership with All Good Catering. It's All Good Catering. And they are generously donating, listen to this, a second place prize of a catering package, a taco bar for 20 people. Yay, what? I want that. <laughs> that would feed me maybe, but... <laughs> And that prize goes to Katrina, please tell me that. So uh, Shay Ganaway Noor made this nomination and the winners are Sophia Piger Cantola and Lisa Firebaugh. I actually first thought that was Fireball, <laughs> Fireball. <laughs> and uh, through their work with rescuing good food and other items that would otherwise be thrown out, they're able to help feed weekly over a thousand people. Uh, through their partnerships and a hundred people directly, uh, those two. So this nonprofit was started a little over a year ago. It's called Plateful Food Bank and it's in Kirkland and uh, started a little over a year and a half ago when they saw community needs they could fill which weren't being met. So they work endless volunteer hours. You can only imagine what goes into mobilizing all of those resources and getting them where they need to go. Um, to support many homeless shelters, safe parking, 
transitional housing, and even other food banks. So that's pretty impressive. So two weeks ago, they were even able to provide a senior center with four large boxes filled with bottles of much needed vitamins. Um, so they're really about nourishing people on every level. Uh, with all that's currently happening, some of the larger, I didn't know this, with all that's currently happening, some of the larger food banks have not been able to continue their complete commitment to pick up their donated food. So Plateful has stepped in and has been able to pick up that food and help distribute it. So boy, I love the way that they work side by side with other nonprofits and collaborate. That's really when we can make a difference. And what an example about giving back to the community, just helping out. I mean, especially in today's times, look what they're doing. So, yeah. so many people, as we know, are out of work right now or whatever, but just a great community effort. And this, this particular nonprofit is raised one is 100% uh, run by 100% volunteer effort. So that's imagine right. that. Yeah. yeah so, all, so all of the nations, any money is going direct to the mission and not to salaries for other people. That's fantastic. Yeah. All right. So, uh, um, I, Sophia and Lisa, I am excited for you to have that taco bar. Uh, thank you, Picado Bueno and All Good Catering. That's very generous. And what's next? What's next? Uh, do we have the new business of the week? Is that right? Uh, well, no. Let's see. Do you think we should talk about the new business of the week? Or yes, let's talk about the new business of the week. That's a great idea. So okay. that is... Yeah, and, and again, I'm in Arizona, right close to the Mexico border. So this is perfect for me, right? The new business of the week is Grenzetta. Am I saying that right? Liqueur. Grandeza. And I've actually had this liqueur. It is. Well, you, you have my mailing address. So, <laughs> <clears throat> But listen to this. A, a premium orange liqueur masterfully developed with the finest natural flavors of Mexico, crafted from pure agave, and is designed to enhance the true flavor profile of tequila, tequila, right? And is an especially perfect addition to any top shelf margarita. I'm yes. in Arizona, margarita, that's our daily drink for <laughs> It is so cool, it is delicious. Once you have this, you'll never go back to Grand Marnier. Uh, it's organic agave nectar and they have designed this cool, they've actually patented this sidecar bottle so you have your margarita and you have this bottle that you can turn, a little bottle like this, you can turn upside down and it hangs on your glass, it's a sidecar and then infuses through your drink. So not only is it incredible liqueur, but it is really cool too. And I will be searching for that. You will, you're gonna have some. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a social distance happy hour. But wow, thank them, well, thank them. That is great, that is great. New business of the week. And uh, so now, are we ready for the first place prize? First place prize. And the real kindness, this is Katrina Elaine. Real estate is giving $1,000. And the prize winner this week is Michelle Pace. Michelle Pace. And I think you have her background. She has such an interesting background, Katrina. She is. And we were talking about, um, we were talking about the story because it was one that was really uh, moving to me. She was, this is a woman who was homeless as last year. And um, she is a single mother and she has been through more in her life than most of us can imagine. Uh, she's back on her feet now. And, uh, but she hasn't forgotten even through everything she's been through and even still getting back on her feet to always give back. And uh, so she is a hero herself in that she, um, is still doing acts of kindness. So she coordinates uh, picking up food from a food bank uh, for a couple of families in her community. She does that. And uh, she found that there was a person in her community that was really struggling and she coordinated uh, cleaning jobs for them. Not only did she get them the jobs, but then what she did is she looked and said, what, what do they need to get there? And she coordinated transportation to and from those jobs. And uh, she even carries extra food in her car so that when she's driving around, she's able to give uh, food to people in need or homeless people that she comes across. She, she truly is someone who has a heart of real kindness. And, and if you looked up in the dictionary, Michelle Pace, and you would see right next to it, everyone could be a hero next to her. And she's the perfect example of giving back. Here's somebody that, that went through hard times and but still remembered to give back to her community and how well deserved Michelle Michelle Pace congratulations 
<laughs> Congratulations, Michelle. Michelle, I am just so thrilled to be in company with the people that we are here in the Real Kindness Group. Thank you for joining us, Frank. Okay, it's a pleasure. Thank you for being a part of it and helping uh, bring shine the light here. All right, so long. Uh, <laughs> have a good week, everyone.